Hi everyone, this is Eric Degisman and welcome to my YouTube channel. For today's video, we are going to discuss and solve some word problems regarding the Venn diagram. And without more ado, let's begin the tutorial video. It is a pictorial representation of the relationships between sets where sets are represented by enclosed areas in the plane. Saan ba natin madalas nagagamit ang Venn diagram? In mathematics, Venn diagrams are frequently used to understand some set theory, especially in the probability subject. So, and also, it is used to do various comparisons for objects or sometimes in situations. The best side of Venn diagram lies in its simplicity. It is very useful for comparing things in a visual manner and identify overlaps. For any given situations, um, research experiments, and even in surveys. And the best way to describe a Venn diagram is to see a figure. So, this is our figure. So, we have a rectangle here. And kadalasan, kapag nakakita tayo ng Venn diagram, usually dalawang circle, tatlong circle, or more on circles lang ang nakikita natin. So, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng rectangle na yan? Universal set U is a set that contains all the elements and set. Ito pong triangle na yan, rectangle na yan, I'm sorry, ayan. For example, in a given situation, lahat ng possible elements dun sa situation na yun ay nakapaloob dito sa rectangle na yan at siya yung tinatawag natin as the universal set or it can be denoted as yung U na lang. It is represented by the points and rectangle. Ayan, lahat ng nasa loob na elements na yan, kasama yung dalawang disk na ito or yung dalawang circle na yan, lahat yan ay nakalpaloob sa universal set. And the other sets are represented by this lying within the rectangle. Ito nga, yun yung set A and set B. Or, when we are talking about events naman sa probability, sample spaces and events, um, ginagamit din natin ng Venn diagram to show the comparisons of events or yung overlappings nila. This is an example of a Venn diagram and ito nakita na natin to sa topic na sample spaces and events. So dito, kapag pinag-uusapan natin ng events, nandito yung complement, intersection, union. Yung tatlo na yon na combination of events ay magagamit din natin kapag nagko-compare na tayo ng objects. So, pangalawa, we have eto so in events ulit um tinatawag natin ito as mutually exclusive events yung dalawang set or dalawang circle na yan na hindi nag-overlap ibig sabihin walang magkamukhang any event any set or any, any element sa kanilang dalawa o sa when diagram for objects we call it as yung disjoint so pag binasa natin yan kapag ininterpret natin yan a and B are disjoint. So, pangatlong example, we have this Venn diagram. So, meron tayong type ng ganitong Venn diagram. Pag ininterpret natin yun in English, A is a proper subset of B. So, limbawa, we are, we are comparing set A at saka set B. Kumbaga, yung set A, pwede natin siyang makuha mismo from the whole set of B. So, kaya nga tinatawag siya as the proper subset of B. In a mathematical symbol, pwede natin siyang i-rewrite as ganito. A is a proper subset of B. And para mas paintindihan natin yung principle ng Venn diagram, let's take example number 1. Example number 1, student A is taking the subject surveying steel design, concrete design, and timber design. Si student B naman, Taking statistics, differential equations, and surveying. A requirement: We are going to draw this, or we are going to deal, or we are going to illustrate the situation in. We are going to illustrate the situation using a Venn diagram. So this is a Venn diagram, and this is the universal set. This rectangle na yan. So this is student A, and this is student B. Now, ang gagawin natin, ano-ano ba yung nakapaloob na elements? Ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is about subjects. We have surveying, steel design, concrete design, timber design, stat, differential equations, and surveying ulit. 
Kung mapapansin natin, mayroon pa yung subject na tinitake si student A at saka si student B. Ibig sabihin, um, intersection yun. Intersection ang tawag dun sa surveying na yun. So, ilalagay natin surveying as an intersection dito sa gitna. Ito, itong part na to. So, dito natin ilalagay si surveying. Meron pa tayong ibang subjects. Yung tinitake ni A alone and tinitake ni B alone. Yung surveying kasi tinitake nila pareho. Kaya sa gitna siya ilalagay and considered, considered as an intersection of the situations. For, letter, for student A, tinitake niya is still design. Still na lang ilagay natin. Concrete and timber. Si student B naman, ang tinitake niyang subjects alone ay yung stat and yung differential equations. This is how we illustrate the situation ni student A at ni student B. Whereas, si student A, ang tinitake niya na subjects na siya lang ay steel design, concrete, and timber design. While si student B naman, ang tinitake niyang subject nang siya lang ay statistics and differential equations and yung surveying ay pareho nilang tinitake. That's why it is an intersection. So, that's example number one. Next, example number two. A set of engineering students were asked which subjects they have failed. They were given the following options ng subjects na naibagsak daw nila. Uh, una, calculus, physics, surveying, and pang-apat ay wala daw, kung wala daw silang naisap, naibagsak. None. Student A, B, C, D, E, and F ay bumagsak daw sa Calculus. Si students A, C, F, G, and H naman failed in physics and si students E, F, H, and I, and J failed in surveying. Meanwhile, si student K at si student L naman daw ay walang naibagsak any of the three subjects. So, ang gagawin natin, we are going to draw, we are going to draw the Venn diagram for this situation or for this experiment. So, this is our Venn diagram. And para mas madali, ilista muna natin lahat ng elements. Lahat ng bumagsak sa calculus, A, B, C, D, E, and F. For physics, A, C, F, G, and H. And for surveying, E, F, H, I and student J. And sa nan naman, yung walang bumagsak, meron tayong dalawa. Si K at saka si student L. Now, paano natin yan ilalagay sa Venn diagram? Ang pinakamadali, every time, kapag maglalagay tayo ng element sa loob ng Venn diagram, hanapin muna natin yung intersection na element. Yung intersecting elements. For calculus, physics, and surveying, meron silang isang same element, C, student, F. Now, saan natin ilalagay si student F? Dito siya sa mismong gitna. For example, um, this circle is calculus. Itong circle nito is the physics. Ito naman is the surveying. And ang ating universal set of course is itong rectangle. Tangle. Ayan, ang ating U. Alam na natin kung saan nakalagay si F. Dito siya sa gitna kasi bumagsak siya sa calculus, physics, and surveying. Ang ilalagay natin ngayon na susunod, yung nandito na sa pangalawang intersection, yung intersection ng dala-dalawang subject lang. Naumpisahan natin sa Calculus and Physics. Sa Calculus and Physics, uh, ilagay ulit natin dito, both cal Calculus and Physics. So, sino-sino ba yung bumagsak sa parehong subject na Calculus and Physics? We have A, si C, at saka nga yung F na nailagay naman na natin kasi si F ay bumagsak din ng surveying. Ngayon, for both physics and surveying naman. Yan. 
Ang bumagsak sa parehong surveying and physics ay si F ulit, of course, and si student H. And next, pangatlo, both calculus and surveying. Ayan. So, ang bumagsak sa parehong calculus and surveying only. Pero pumasa naman siya sa physics ay si na E and F ulit. So, ganyan lagi ang pinakamadaling way kapag ka maglalagay tayo sa, ng elements sa loob ng Venn diagram. Una ay natin dun sa may pinakamaliit na intersection. And then the secondary. And then yung singular sets na. So, inuna natin si F kasi nakabilang siya sa loob nakabilang siya sa lahat ng ating set for calculus, physics, and surveying. Gagawin naman natin, isusunod natin yung intersection ng set ng calculus at saka physics. Ito nga yun. So, dahil nalagay na natin si F dito, ang ilalagay na lang natin sa part na to ay si A at saka si C na lang. And for physics and surveying, both physics and surveying, si F at saka si H. And dahil nilagay na ulit natin si F dito, ang ilalagay na lang natin sa part na to ay si H. Remember, hindi natin pwedeng mailagay si C sa loob nito. Sa loob nung pinaglalagyan nitong F. Kasi, hindi naman niya naibagsak yung surveying. Pasado siya sa surveying, bagsak lang siya sa calculus and physics. Therefore, dito lang siya sa part na ito. So, ayun. And next, for both calculus and surveying naman, dalawa lang ulit, si student E at saka si student F. And dahil nalagay na natin si F, dito na lang ilalagay natin si E na lang. And again, remember, si E, hindi natin pwedeng ilagay dito sa katabi ni F kasi hindi naman niya naibagsak yung physics. Ang bagsak lang niya is calculus and surveying only. So that's how we put the elements inside the Venn diagram. And last, doon nasa singular sets natin, for calculus muna tayo. Sa calculus, ang nailagay na natin ay si A, si C, si F, at saka si E. Ang hindi na lang natin nailalagay ay si B at saka si D. So, dito natin sila ilalagay sa labas ng ating mga intersections na area. Kasi si B at saka si D ay sa calculus lang nag-fail. Next, for physics. Ang nailagay pa lang natin sa physics ay si A, si C, si F, and si H. Meron pang isang natitira, si student G. Si student G kasi, ang field lang niya ay sa physics lang. So, dito natin siya ilalagay. Remember, hindi natin pwedeng ilagay si G dito sa pinaglalagay ni A and C. Dito sa H and mas lalong dito sa F kasi ang bagsak nga lang ni student G ay physics lang. And lastly, for the surveying, ang nailalagay pa lang natin sa Venn diagram na element ay si student E, F, and H. Meron pa tayong student I and J. Ilalagay natin sila dito sa area na ito. Kasi, again, ang naibagsak lang na ni student I at ni student J ay yung surveying lang. Meron pa tayong dalawang element, si student K at saka si student L. Ang sabi, according to the survey, wala daw silang naibagsak from the three subjects. So, saan natin sila ilalagay? Kaya nga mahalaga, every time gagawa tayo ng Venn diagram, ilalagay din natin yung universal set. Kasi hindi lahat ng object ay nakapaloob sa... Kasi hindi lahat ng object na ibibigay sa atin ay nakapaloob sa Venn diagram. Merong mga wala. So, saan natin lalagay si student K at saka si student L? Dahil hindi sila bumagsak ng calculus, hindi sila pwede dito. Hindi rin sila bumagsak ng physics, hindi sila pwede dito. And hindi rin sila bumagsak ng surveying, hindi sila pwede dito. Therefore, si student K and student L ay dito sa labas ng ating Venn diagram. Next, example number 3. In an online class survey, 750 students were selected by random types of sampling methods. So, in this problem, uh, we are given numerical values na. Meron tayong number of elements. 320 students use mobile phones. 285 students use laptops. And 113 students daw ay gumagamit ng pareho, laptop 
and sometimes mobile phones. Question number one, how many students use laptop only? Question number two, how many students use mobile phones only? Ibig sabihin, isa lang mga students na walang ibang ginagamit kundi mobile phones lang. And third question, how many, how many students use neither laptop or mobile phones? Walang, wala silang ginagamit. Um, hindi sila gumagamit ng phone, hindi rin sila gumagamit ng laptop. Pangapat, how many students use at least one of both gadgets? At least one of both gadgets. And panghuli, how many students use only one of laptop or mobile phone? So, para malaman natin yung mga exact na bilang ng students, kasi ang bigay lang sa atin is, apat na data lang. We have 750 students as yung total ng survey natin, total population, 320 for mobile phones. And take note, yung 320 students na yun na gumagamit ng mobile phones, may ilan doon na gumagamit din ng laptop. As well as sa 285 students na gumagamit daw ng laptop, Meron ding ilang portion doon sa 285 students na yun na gumagamit ng mobile phones. Kaya nga, sila yung 113 students na gumagamit ng parehong phone and laptop. So, hindi na, paano natin malalaman yung, or may extract yung exact values na gumagamit lang ng laptop only and ng mobile phones only. So, in this problem, of course, we will use Venn diagram. So, let's consider this circle as the mobile phones or simply A na lang and this one as the laptop or simply B na lang para hindi tayo mahirapan and this rectangle ito yung ating U na naglalaman na 750 na total population of students sa survey. Hindi natin pwedeng ilagay kabod yung 320 dito sa part na to kasi yung 320 students na gumagamit ng mobile phones only, itong buong circle yan. And yung 285 for laptop, ito rin yung buong circle na yan. So for A, we have a total of NA number of gumagamit ng mobile phones, we have 320. And for laptop users, we have 285 students. So, ang first question natin, how many students use laptop only? So, ang gumagamit ng laptop, first data is 285, but yung iba doon ay gumagamit ng mobile phones. Pero, meron tayong initial data. Sabi ko nga, every time gagawa tayo ng Venn diagram, ang unahin nating lagyan is yung inner intersection nila. So, we have 113 students. So, automatically, dito natin nilalagay yung 113 students na yan. So, alam na natin yung nandito sa gitna, kaya na natin malaman yung ilalagay natin dito sa magkabilang side ng Venn diagram natin. For letter A, laptop only, or we can denote is we can denote it as a or n b only is equal to meron tayong total na gumagamit ng laptop na 285 or siya yung n b minus yung number of both a and b ito yun yung 113 so ilalagay natin we have n b na 285 minus yung number ng both A and B users, laptop and mobile phones users, we have 113. So, ang gumagamit ng laptop only ay 172 students. Ito yung gumagamit ng laptop lang. For letter B naman, mobile phones only. Or, i-denote natin as number or NA only. So, ilan yan? So, we have the total number of mobile phone users na 320. Or, this is NA minus N both A 
and B, yan nga yung 113 yung bilang ng student sa gumagamit ng laptop at saka ng phone. So, this is 320 minus 113. So, ilan yan? We have 207 students. Ito, yung bilang na ang ginagamit lang ay mobile phones only. Never silang gumamit ng laptop. So, that's for letter B. And for letter C, wala daw gumagamit ng kahit ano, ng laptop or ng phone. Neither laptop or phone. So, this is N na lang. Lagyan na lang on oh, neither. Ito, ang bilang natin ay ilan. So, meron tayong total number ng population na sinurveyan natin. We have 750. Yung 750 na yan, itong buong rectangle yan. And yung nakapaloob dito sa Venn diagram natin, lahat lang na gumagamit ng phone, laptop, and yung But, ibig sabihin, para natin malaman kung ilan ba yung walang ginagamit, uh, we use the data for, from the Venn diagram. We have a total of you na 750 minus, so alam na natin yung nakalagay dito sa NB, only we have 172, lagay natin. And dito naman sa NA only, we have 207 students. So, para malaman natin yung exact na bilang ng, wal ng students na walang ginagamit, we take the universal set, 750 students, eto siya, U, minus N, A only, eto siya, minus N, B only, minus N, A, and B, yan yung both. Ito siya. So, isubtract lang natin para malaman natin yung laman nitong nasa outside ng Venn diagram natin. And the answer is, substitute, we have 750 students minus 207 yung NA only minus 172 NB only minus 113 yung both laptop and mobile phones users. So, calculating, we have 258 students. Yang 258 students na yan ay hindi gumagamit ng kahit ano. Maaring books, modules, or hindi sila naka-enroll. And for our fourth question, letter D, how many students use at least One of both gadgets. Pwedeng isa. Kasi at least one nga. Hindi naman sinabing exactly one lang. Kasi kung exactly one lang, eto yon Yung susunod yun na question. For a fourth question, ang tinatanong sa atin, at least one gadget. Pwedeng ang gamit niya isa. Pwedeng dalawa. So for letter D, N of at least one. Ito ang hinahanap natin for Letter D, paano natin malalaman yan? At least one daw. So, pag aadin lang natin, yung gumagamit ng laptop only, yung gumagamit ng mobile phones only, at yung pareho ang ginagamit kasi at least one. Ang gamit niya is one or more gadget. So, paano yun? We have yung laptop only, we have 172. Yung mobile phones only, 207 students. So, ito yung bilang ng tigisa lang lagi ang ginagamit. Pero sabi nga, at least one. One or more. So, i-add din natin yung 113 na gumagamit ng dalawa pareho. So, ang total number ng students na gumagamit ng one or more gadgets ay 492 students. So, this is letter D. And lastly, for letter E, how many students use only one laptop or mobile phone? Ito na nga sinasabi. Kasi kanina, ang sabi lang, for letter D, at least one, one or more. Dito naman, only one lang daw. Pwedeng mobile, pwedeng mobile phone, pwedeng laptop. So, gagawin natin, dito sa letter D kasi, pinag natin yung mobile only, laptop only, at saka yung both. Tatanggalan na natin yung both for letter E. 
only one. So, ang pag add lang natin dito, yung laptop only na 172, and yung mobile phones only na 207. 379 students. So, ayan yung gumagamit ng isa lang gadget. Isa to sa mga uses ng Venn diagram natin to know the exact value from the survey. Exact numbers. So, that's example number 3. Next, example number 4. In an engineering class, so, in an engineering class, 83 daw ay nag-aral ng algebra. 74, nag-aral ng trigonometry. And yung 60 ay nag-aral ng geometry. And another data, yung 32 daw ay nag-aral ng parehong algebra and trigonometry. 32 studied both algebra and trigonometry. 19, 19 students studied both algebra and geometry naman. And yung 25 studied both trigonometry and geometry. And mayroong sampo na nag-aral nung lahat ng subject na yon tatlo. How many students studied the algebra only? The trigonometry only, the geometry only, and ilan daw silang lahat sa klase? How many students are there in the class? So, parang ganun lang din sa example number 3 natin kanina. Yun nga lang, in this example, Uh, panghuling inahanap natin yung total number of class kasi hindi naman binigay sa atin. Hindi natin pwedeng ipag-add lang lahat ng numerical value na 83 plus 74 plus 60 plus 19 plus 25 and so on kasi may mga overlapping situations dito. So, yun. That's why we use, that's why we will use Venn diagram again. And this is our Venn diagram. Tatlong subject na. Uh, let's say this is the algebra and this is the trigo. And ito naman, panghuli natin, we have dito na lang. Ito yung geometry natin. And of course, this rectangle is yung ating universal set na U. Now, Again, pinakamainam na gagawin yung inner intersection nila, yung pinakamalit na intersection. And we have 10. Meron tayong value ng 10 dito. Yung 10 students na yan, yan yung nag-aral nung lahat ng subjects, algebra, trigonometry, and geometry. Lalagay natin yan dito sa gitna. So, for example, algebra is denoted as A, trigo is B, geometry is C, kung uh, i-rewrite natin yan in a mathematical symbol, so yung 10 yan is intersection ng tatlo. So, ilalagay natin yan as N A intersection B intersection C. Yan yung 10 na yan. Intersection ng tatlong subjects natin. Algebra, trigo, and geometry. And then, ang unang inahanap sa atin ay yung nag-aral lang ng algebra, pangalawa, yung nag-aral lang ng trago, and pangatlo, yung nag-aral lang ng geometry. So, meron tayong mga secondary na intersections. We have yung 32 na nag-aral ng algebra and trago, 19, and yung 25. So, doon muna tayo sa 32. Intersection ng algebra and trago. So, Rewriting this in a mathematical symbol, we have N A intersection B. Yan yung 32 students natin. So, para malaman kung ilan lang yung mga exact bilang nila, ilagay muna natin. We have 32. Itong 32 na yan, ito yan, itong intersection na yan, ito. This is the 32. Kaya lang, may 10 na kasi dito. Sa 32 na yan, mayroong 10 dyan na nag-aral din ng geometry. So, hindi natin ilalagay yung 32 kabot dito. Ang ilalagay lang natin sa part na ito, ito, we have 32 minus 10. So, 22. Yung 22 na yan na nag-aral lang ng algebra and trigo. 
yung sampu kasi nag-aral sila ng algebra and trigo pero inaral din nila yung geometry natin. So this is 22. Next, yung ilalagay naman natin dito sa etong part na ito. So yun, dahil alam na natin yung 10, alam na natin 22. Next, for the intersection of algebra and geometry. So ilagay natin, we have N, A, intersection, C. C represents the geometry. Ilan yan? We have 19 students. Ayan, yung 19 students na yan, ito yung buo na yan. Kaya lang, inaanap natin, ilalagay lang sa part na to. So, ilan yun? We have 19 minus 10. So, this is 9 na lang. Again, ang nag-aral ng algebra and geometry ay 19. Pero dun sa 19 na yun, mayroong 10 na nag-aral din ng trigonometry. At ito nga sila. Nakapaload na yan. And next, for the intersection of trigo and geometry. This is N. B, intersection, C. So, ang bilang nila is 25 students. And again, yung 25 students ay itong buong part na yan, buong area na yan. Ang kailangan lang natin lagyan now is itong part na ito. Doon sa 25 students, yung 25 students na yan studied both trigonometry and geometry. Pero, Sampu out of 25 students na yun ay nag-aaral din ng algebra. So, ang ilalagay lang natin dito is 25 minus 10, we have 15 students. Ibig sabihin niyan, 15 students lang yung nag-aaral ng trigo and geometry alone. Wala silang ibang pinag-aaralan. And now, malalaman na natin yung exact value ng nag-aaral lang ng algebra only, trigonometry only, geometry only gamit yung ating mga given data. Ito yung mga nauna. We have 83, 74, and 60. Ayan. So, paano natin gagamitin yan? Yung 80, oh, for algebra muna, yung 83 na yan, itong buong circle. Ito yan. Yung 83. Pero, yung 83 na yan, nandyan na yung may nag-aral din ng geometry, may nag-aral na rin dyan ng trigo, may nag-aral na rin dyan ng lahat, subject, parang ganun. So, para malaman yung bilang ng algebra only, ima-minus lang natin. Simply, arithmetic lang po ang gagawin natin dito. We have 83, lagay natin is N A algebra only. Ito yung part na yan. Ito, itong part na yan. Yung algebra only. Para malaman natin, we subtract yung 83 as NA. Ito yung NA natin. Minus 9. 9 na nag-aral din ng geometry. Minus 22. Yung 22 na yan. Yung iba kasi dyan, nag-aral din ng trigo. And yung 10 na nag-aral ng lahat ng subject. 42 students. Ayan ang nag-aral lang ng algebra only. Next for trigo only or denoted as NB only. We have the total number of students na nag-aral ng trigonometry na 74. Sa 74 na yan, may nag-aaral na rin dyan ng geometry and algebra and may nag-aaral na rin dyan ng lahat ng subject. Pero ang tinatanong lang kasi is trigonometry only. So, ilagay natin 74 minus, so dito sa part na to, ang ilalagay na natin is 42 na lang. Ayan, sa algebra. Next, for trigo, 74 minus 15. Yung 15 na yan, nag-aaral din ng geometry. Minus 22. Yan, 22 na yan, nag-aral din ng algebra and minus 10 na nag-aral ng lahat ng subject. 27 students. So, the number of students who that stud, so the number of students na nag-aral ng trigonometry only are 27, ay 27 lang. So, that's letter B. Letter C naman, Geometry only or C only. 
total number of students na nag-aaral ng geometry ay 60. Minus, so ilalagay natin dito ay, this is 27. For letters E, 60 minus 9 na nag-aaral din ng algebra, minus 15 na nag-aaral din ng trigo, and minus 10 na nag-aaral ng lahat ng subject. Ang total number natin, 26 students only yung nag-aaral ng geometry. A only, B only, C only, we have 42, 27, and 26 respectively. And for the last question, ilalagay muna natin dito is 26. So, ito na yung ating Venn diagram with the corresponding number of sample points or elements. For the last question, ang tinatanong sa atin ay kung ilan daw lahat ng sadyante. Dahil nalagay na natin bawat area ng Venn diagram natin, ito, nalagay na natin silang lahat. To determine the total number of students, pag adin na lang natin silang lahat. So, total number is equal to, we have, unay natin 26, ito siya, plus 42, ayun, plus 27, Plus 9, plus 22, plus 15, and plus 10. We have 151 total number of students. So, ayan yung pinagkuhanan ng survey for example number 4. Next, example number 5. Problem, a team of researchers conducted a survey of a survey with 1,000 students about their study hours. The survey results show that 52% studies at morning. So, sulat natin. 52 morning. Yeah. 55 students Studies at afternoon. This is 55. Di nakita. Afternoon. And 33% of the students studied at and 33% at the evening. In addition to the research survey, we have 18% na nag-aaral ng from afternoon to, ay from morning to afternoon. 23% from afternoon to evening and yung 15% natin nag-aaral ng umaga and then magre-resume ng evening. And meron pa tayong additional, we have 3% na never nag-aaral. Do not study at all. So we have 3 questions. How many students like to study all day? First, first question yun. Pangalawa, how many students like to study at only one of the three? Isang base lang siya talaga nag-aaral. And pangatlo, how many students like to study at least two of the given times? So, to solve for the exact value ng students natin, we use Venn diagram ulit. So, we have uh, initial given 52%, 55, 33, and yung intersection natin, we have 18, 23, 15, and yung 3% natin na wala sa Venn diagram kasi hindi sila nag-aaral. So, for letter A, let denote this 52% as NA. This is A, this is B, this is C, and B. And, C. and for the intersection, isulat natin yung nag-aaral from morning to afternoon. A, intersection B, we have ilang percent? Um, 18 percent. Nag-aaral from afternoon to evening. A, in B, intersection C. 23%. And yung nag-aaral from morning and then resumes at evening. We have N, A, intersection, C. Number is 15%.
Para malaman, lagyan natin ng label yung ating Venn diagram. This is, so this is the A, yung morning. This is B, afternoon. This is C, yung ating evening. And of course, this is the universal set U. O, ayan. Now, para malaman, ang hinahanap kasi sa atin ay yung nag-aaral maghapon. Ibig sabihin, nag-aaral ng umaga, ng morning, afternoon, and evening. Intersection ng tatlong. So, dito yung nakapaloob. Ito siya. In mathematical symbol, ang kanyang symbol ay N A intersection B intersection C. So, paano natin malalaman yung values niyan? Para malaman yung value niya, mayroon pa tayong isang given na 3%. Yung 3% na yun, yun nga yung hindi nag-aaral. Ibig sabihin, kung tatanggalin yung 3% na yun at 100%, 97% lang yung lahat na nag-aaral. So, isang point na agad yun. Tatanggalin natin 3%, we have 97% ng bilang or ng percentage na nag-aaral lang. Kaya so, umaga, gabi, tanghali, pareho, or buong araw. Dito natin malalaman yun. Nasa kapaloob sa 97% na yan. And, ang gagawin natin, isusubtract natin minus yung number ng Nag-aaral sa umaga. So, yung 97% kasi nyan, ito yan. Ito, from here. Kung shade ko yan, buo yan. Lahat yan is 97%. Doon sa 97% na yun, isusubtract muna natin yung num, itong mga shaded area for letter A. Ito. For letter B. Ito yun. For letter C, ito yun. NA minus NB minus NC. And then, meron tayong mga overlapping situations na nakalagay dito, ito. So, para malaman natin yung value nitong nasa gitna na to, i-add naman natin lahat ng values na nandito so that may iwan lang eto so iso ay add natin yung a intersection b o yung nag-aaral from morning to afternoon n a intersection b plus eto yon and sha plus b intersection c nag-aaral from afternoon to evening eto yon plus N, A, intersection, C. Yung nag-aaral from, nag-aaral ng morning and then evening. Ito yun. So now, with this equation, malalaman na natin yung value kung ilan yung exact value ng nag-aaral all day. Substituting the values, we have 97% minus N, A na 52%. Minus NB na 55. Minus NC na 33%. Plus NA intersection B na 18%. Plus NB intersection C na 23%. Plus NA intersection C na 15%. We have 13%. So, ito yung, bilang, yung percentage na nag-aaral all day. Pero ang tinatanong kasi sa atin, yung exact value, and we have given a total population of 1,000 students. So, kuhanin natin 13% doon. Ang 13% doon ay 13% of 1,000 is 130 students. So, ayan for letter A. Lahat ng uh, out of 1,000 students, 130 students yung nag-aaral ng maghapon from morning sa from morning to afternoon to evening so that's for letter A. Ang ilalagay na natin dito sa Venn diagram ngayon yung unang exact value natin na 13%. So this is 13%. So and then 
pwede na rin natin ilagay yung iba pa, yung iba pa nating value. So, dito sa part na ito, we have this NA intersection, B at ang intersection nila ay 18%. So, ilan ang ilalagay ko sa part na ito? We have 18 minus 13%. So, 5% na lang yung lalagay natin dito. And for this part, ang ating B intersection C ay 23%. So, 23% minus 13% is 10%. And para sa part na to, we have 15%. 15% A intersection C yun. 15% minus 13% is 2%. And then ngayon, kayang-kaya na natin ilagay yung mga values dito sa areas na blanco pa. For A only, B only, C only. Malalaman na natin lahat na nag-aaral lang ng A, ng morning lang, ng afternoon lang, and then ng evening only. So, for morning muna, letter A only. For morning, we have a total percentage of 52%. So, 52%, nagay natin dito, N, A, only. So, 52%, minus 5%, na nag din ng afternoon and 2% na nag din ng evening at yung 13% na nag maghapon. 32%. Ayan yung nakalagay dito. NB only. We have for afternoon, ang total na nag ay 55%. Minus 5%, minus 10%, minus 13%. So, ang total ay, we have 27%. That's for afternoon only. And for evening only, N, C only. Total number of, percent, total percentage for evening ay 33%. Minus 10%, minus 2%, and minus 13%. So, for evening only, 8%. So, in 32, na ilagay na natin, ito siya. Ngayon, itong 27, dito siya for B only. And yung 8%, ito siya. Ito yung lahat ng values for each area sa Venn diagram natin. Dahil alam na natin lahat ng values ng area for Venn diagram, masasolve na natin ngayon yung problem ng, uh, yung second problem. How many students like to study at only one of the three? And, and dahil alam na natin itong 32%, 27%, at 8%, ito yung mga percentage na isang basis lang sa isang araw mag-aral. So we have, for letter B, um, only one. 32%. Basta, sa, ang condition kasi sa letter B ay yung isang beses lang mag-aaral. Hindi na, uh, without regards kung morning yon, kung afternoon or evening. Basta isang beses sa isang araw mag-aaral. We have 32% plus 27% plus 8%. So, we have a total percentage of 67%. Pero, ang kailangan sa atin is yung exact number of students. So, 67% of 1,000 ay 670 students. So, this is the answer for letter B. And for the last question, letter C. How many students like to study at least two of the given times? At least two. Pwedeng dalawang beses, pwedeng tatlong beses sila nag-aaral sa isang buong araw. Two or more. So, para malaman natin yun, N at least two. And N at least two. So, paano ang arithmetic ang gagawin natin? Paano natin ipagkocombine? Para sa at least 2, siyempre, hindi natin pwedeng ilagay yung 32x na yan, yung 27x na rin yan, tsaka yung 8% kasi isang beses lang yung nag-aaral 
the whole day. Pero, pwede natin ilagay si 2%, ito, kasi nag-aaral yan ng morning at saka ng evening. Si 10%, dahil dalawang beses din siya mag-aaral, afternoon to evening. Si 5%, ito, kasi nag-aaral siya from morning to afternoon. And si 13% na nag-aaral ng buong araw, 30%. Or, in exact number of students, we have 300 students na nag-aaral dalawang beses hanggang tatlong beses sa isang araw. So, this is example number 5. Ang given sa atin is percentage. Kapag given percentage, kukunin lang natin yung exact value using those percentage. Yung multiply natin dun sa total number of population. And for last example, example number 6. There are 200 athletes participating in his sports events. So, 54 from those 200 athletes played volleyball. 65 played basketball. 56 participated in the football. And 21 participated in volleyball and basketball. Intersection ulit. 33 participated in the basketball and football. 36 played fo both football and volleyball. And we have another value, 19 entered all three events. So, lahat ng hindi naglaro ay nag-track and field na lang. So, the question, how many athletes went track and field out of 200 students? Athletes. So, we will use again a Venn diagram, of course. So, lista muna natin lahat. Let's say this is volleyball. Or simply... A na lang. And this is basketball. Denoted as B. This is football. As seen, of course, this rectangle is the universal set U with 200 population athletes. Uh, sulat natin isa-isa. For number of volleyball players, NA... 54, NB, basketball, 65, NC, football, 56, and the intersection, yung naglaro ng volleyball and basketball, A, intersection B, we have 21, NB, intersection C, naglaro ng basketball and football, this is Uh, 33, and intersect A intersection C, naglaro ng volleyball and football, we have 36. And intersection ng tatlo, we have N, A, intersection B, intersection C, ang value natin is 19 at leads. Now, ang inahanap natin is yung wala sa Venn diagram. Kasi yung wala sa Venn diagram, nag- track and field daw. Alam na natin agad yung inner intersection, yung pinakamalit intersection natin, and we have 19. So, ilalagay natin 19 dito. This is 19. And next, ilalagay natin mga secondary intersections, yung dala-dalawa lang. Dito mo natin start sa 21. So, yung 21 natin is intersection of volleyball and basketball. So, yung 21 na yan ay dito nakalagay. So, ang kailangan natin is itong area na ito. So, 21 minus 19. We have 2. And next, intersection of basketball and football. We have 33. At least na naglaro ng both basketball and football. And, kailangan natin is yung area na to. So, subtract 19. We have 14. At least na naglaro lang ng basketball and football lang. Kasi 19, naglaro din siya ng volleyball. Doon sa 19, meron doon naglaro din ng, or lahat yung naglaro din ng volleyball. And next, for the intersection of volleyball and football, we have 36 athletes. Pero sa 36 na yun, may naglaro din kasi ng basketball. So, kailangan lang natin eh, yung itong part lang na to. So, 36 minus 19 is 17. And now, para malaman yung mga natitirang area pa natin for volleyball only, basketball only, and football only, subtract lang din ang gagawin natin. We have given a total volleyball players of 54. Ito siya. 
So 54 for NA only. 54 minus 2 na naglaro din ang basketball, minus 17 na naglaro din ang football, and minus 19 na naglaro niya lahat, is equal to 16. So, lalagay natin dito is 16 at least. And for basketball only, NB only. So, we have a total basketball players na 65 minus 2 na naglaro ng volleyball, Minus 40 na naglaro ng football and minus 19 na naglaro ng pareho lahat. So, we have 30. This is 30. And for the football only, C only, we have a total football players of 56. Minus 14 na naglaro ng basketball, minus 17 na naglaro ng volleyball, and minus 19 na naglaro ng lahat ng event, ng tatlong event. We have 6. Anim ang naglaro ng So anim ang naglaro ng football, 16 ang naglaro lang ng volleyball and 30 naglaro lang ng basketball. Ang tinatanong sa atin, ilan daw ba yung hindi naglaro ng volleyball, basketball and football kasi yung hindi lumaro noon ay nagpunta sa track and field. We have a total population of 200 athletes. So para malaman yung Hindi nag, yung nag track and field na is nandito sa paligid yun. Wala siya sa loob ng Venn diagram. Given, itong unang circle is volleyball, pangalawang circle basketball, pangatlong circle is football. So, para malaman yun, lagay na lang natin as N is equal to yung total number of athletes sa 200 minus lahat ng nandito sa loob ng ating area sa Venn diagram. Kasi pag pinag-add mo ito lahat, ito lahat yung naglaro. So, wala nang overlapping, wala nang overlapping yan. Minus, unay natin sa 16, minus 30, minus 6, minus 2, minus 14, minus 17, and lastly, minus 19. So, ang bilang ng nag-track and field ay 96. At least. And that's all for Venn Diagram. Please like and share. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.